what's up guys war here today we're going to go over how to farm gems inside of season 28 in diablo 3 uh, when it comes to gem farming guys gems are very important you're going to need these to augment all of your gear like you see here all right and it costs a lot of gems to get uh these three flawless royals of whatever main stat that you're doing for your character and it can take a while to gain up a bunch of gems so i'm gonna go over some strategies some tips and tricks on how to help you guys farm these because i need them badly too you can see my inventory and it just it just reeks of no gems i feel like i'm poor with none, no gems here biggest and most important thing that you're gonna need is your follower with a broken crown this is by far the the thing that you need to farm as many as possible so with the broken crown whenever a gem drops the gem of a socketed uh type in your helmet not your followers uh will also drop so for me right now i have a diamond in there but if i had emeralds because i'm a dex based player whenever a uh, emerald drops i get a second one so make sure you have this on your follower no matter what so the first and foremost i want to say is doing any of the normal rifts is just out of the question okay these as well as bounties is not something i would want to do as far as trying to farm the most amount of gems in the shortest amount of time or as efficiently as some of the other strategies i'm going to talk to you guys about so nephilim rifts off limits okay don't do those okay bounties same thing i would not do those even though you can pick up gems along the way right or when you open up your caches there's going to be some uh possibly probably not actually and then you just get them from like if you have a bounty to kill uh you know a boss and you open up their chest and they have those gems like that's nice but it's a lot of time to go through and do all that so for me i would not do that i would not do nephilim rifts and i would not do bounties so those two are off limits so the the four ways or really three that i have for you is grinding grs this is first and foremost because you're going to get gems every single time as well as great exp and um items that you're going to need for gearing up the rest of your characters uh and the gears that you're going to get to min max your stats so that way you can augment those right so that is the first one and we're going to go do uh one gr just so i can show you uh how many you're actually going to get from farming one gr okay this is going to be one gr now i've done some uh some riffs here it's not necessarily going to matter which tier that you do um past 90 but i would say at least do 90 because 90 gives you the maximum amount of items which is 12 and then that way you can get the maximum amount of gems so we'll just do a 90 just to showcase this gem does not count and i want to show you how many you'll get from just doing a gr so put on your your best speediest bill and we're going to go through and just knock this out and you guys can get an idea of how many you get per gem farm or excuse me per rift that you're doing to see how many gems you get we're going to do all of this just live here on stream, which is just fantastic. I appreciate everybody being here while we're destroying these rifts with our GR90. One of the top farming builds in the game. Oh, that's a dead end. Okay. So when doing this strategy, get your fastest build. It doesn't matter what it is. Even if you hate playing it or you hate the God DH. Just play the build so you can farm these efficiently and as fast as possible, okay? We don't want to do anything else but just get through here as fast as we can. I don't like this map, but that's okay. Not a big fan of it. All right. Okay, make sure to pick everything up. Do you get six gems per run? of at least a gr90 or higher okay so that's pretty good if you're just farming gr90s and just doing greater rifts this is a great way to get gems that you need so the two best strategies that i have found is doing echoing nightmares and then puzzle rings okay to get into the vaults okay these two using puzzle rings is by far the best method but doing echoing 
Nightmares is also very, very good because one, you're going to get a bunch of items. You're going to get gems. And then the biggest part, we're going to do one. The biggest part is that once you get past, I think it's tier 128, there's a high chance that a pylon is going to spawn where you can spawn a bunch of goblins and they drop a bunch of gems. Um, we're going to do our best to spawn that pylon. And if we don't get it, we'll try again. But that way you can see how many gems you can get from doing an Echoing Nightmare. This is also very good because you're going to have to get the Whispering um, Atonements. So that way you can augment your gear. So let's go. And if you guys have not seen my Echoing Nightmare strat guide on how I like to do these, please check that out on the channel. I think it's a really good strategy. I think it's fantastic. It's a pretty good baseline. If other people have great ideas for that, please let me know down in the comments for sure. So the goal here is to get to past 126 to about 128. So that way we can get the um, pylon to spawn. And you'll know when you get it because on your mini map, it's going to be a separate pylon on top of the four that we already have. So you see the four that we have for each of the shrines. We'll get another one for the goblins. And it spawns all type of goblins. It can spawn the gelatin or gelatinous one, which is the blue ones. It can spawn just the gem hoarders. It can spawn, you know, um, what, like the Maleficence one or whatever that one's called. I can't remember what that one's called. But it has a chance to spawn any of those. So we are going to do our best to get one to spawn. I really hope we get it first try. That would be fantastic for the video. So we're at, we're almost there. We're about to start popping these pylons here in a second. All right. I think, I think we're going to go ahead and grab a speed. Let's grab that. As always, guys, make sure you get power before you get conduit and this should carry you the entire way should carry you the whole way make sure to dodge everything too yeah yeah all right we're at 105 we're getting there remember to pop your potions ladies and gentlemen pop those potions pop it pop it all right, look for the pylon, guys. We're getting close. I need to, there we go, kill that big guy. That was huge. We're at 120. Very nice, we need to kill this fat dude. All right, kill that. All right, we're at 125. There it is, right here. So you pop that, and a bunch of goblins spawn. I'm glad we got it, though. I'm glad we got it. We got overwhelmed, but we got it. Oh, man. So we got it here, guys. It spawns just like this. Uh, unfortunately, we, we got overwhelmed, and we couldn't, um, we couldn't get enough of them to spawn. But that is a very good way to get those. And it spawns right after like 126. So we got a 125 gem. Puzzle rings is by far the best way to farm puzzle or excuse me, to farm gems. Now we're going to go through and do both so I can show you the difference. We've done videos like this in the past as far as like doing 10 normals and 10 ancients. Ancients by default is always better. But just to show you the big difference here, we're going to go in and do a normal puzzle ring first. Okay. So we'll hit this up. Transmute. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Transmute. So let's just go do a normal vault. Just to showcase how many we can get. Don't worry. We'll double back, guys. No problem. And again, the kind of goblins that will spawn is completely random. So, you know, this is just going to kind of be an average. It's not necessarily going to be the total number because you could get more gem goblins than, let's say, the treasure goblins or the insufferable miscreants, you know. So 
Uh, just keep that in mind when you're doing these. So we got 64 gems, which is pretty nice. And obviously the most being our diamonds because that's what we have in our helmet. So we got 54 of those, which is pretty dang good. So now let's go do a uh, ancient puzzle ring so you guys can see the difference. There should be plenty of goblins in here. This is also a really good form to farm mats, which we can talk about later for sure. Hopefully it doesn't lag me out. <laughs> Oh my God, so much better. So much better. So we have what, 64? So we had 64 just from doing a normal rift and we have 64 of just the Imperial Diamond in Ancient Vaults. So we ended up with a total of 89, 89, 90, 102, 116, 120, 135, 38, uh, 142, 143. So 143 minus the 64. We we more than doubled the amount of gems that we got from doing an ancient vault as opposed to a normal vault. It is still very hard to get ancient puzzle rings. I only have one left. I've only found four this season. Um, and I've found a bunch of the normal ones. Now, the best strategy with using your puzzle rings is definitely to group up, get into a party of four, and everybody just take a turn using rings. Uh, take a turn using rings, go in alphabetical order based on your character name, and just rip through these. Even if they're normal ones, 64 per, you know, if you only have three, that turns into, you know, 12. That's 12 vaults at 64 gems a piece. That is just a huge way to be able to farm these. So I would definitely recommend partying up and doing those every time you want to farm these gems okay so that right there that's the best strategies i have for you guys when it comes to farming gems if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like if you guys are new here be sure to subscribe comment down below what do you guys think if you guys have any tips tricks addition things that i missed and didn't go over for gem farming let me know and as always stay gaming catch you guys in the next one peace